Hi everyone. Well, as most of us know, this is the week of war. And the cosmic code of the Bible actually says something very strange. Maybe some of you have heard about it. It says, when you go to this war, and by the way, that's the uh, grammar. It's you, singular. So we understand the war is about us. It's a personal war that we need to be constantly involved with. And we need to be constantly involved with. We shouldn't think we can uh, run away from it because that's just not possible. Even if you move to a desert island by yourself, there's still going to be a war, a personal war that we're going to have to fight with that other part of ourselves if we want to enjoy a life of peace and harmony. So the portion says when you go to the war against your enemy, and the first thing it says, you see a beautiful woman. Now what if you're a woman and you see a beautiful woman? But okay, we'll leave that alone. You see a beautiful woman. You happen to be a righteous person because that's who this, uh, this war is being fought by, actually. The scriptures tell us that this war was being fought by tzaddikim, righteous people. So when you see a beautiful woman among the prisoners and you desire her, you can take her for a wife. But before you do that, she must take off her captive clothing and she should shave her head and let her fingernails grow. Wow, attractive. And she should... Stay in your house for a month while she cries over her father and mother. Pretty strange. Anyway, after that, you can take her for a wife. Now, the rest of the portion is filled with rules, a lot of rules. Some things that make some sense, some things that don't make any sense, like not mixing wool and linen together in the same uh, suit of clothing. And uh, about, about a firstborn son and about... Uh, burial and about someone who's rebellious and a lot of lot of things about animals that fell down in the field about a bird's nest guardrails lost articles a lot of different things now what is this all about what is it really trying to tell us we spoke of the concept of war which means we are in a constant battle and if we're not we need to be because we have two parts and we have that part of us, which is the soul, and we have our body. Our body is connected with all of our ego desires, personal desires, selfish desires, self-preservation, and everything that has to do with this world and belongs of this world. But our soul is not of this world. Our soul is actually our spark. It belongs to the creation. It's part of the creative force of energy. God, the light, if you will. So it is an opposite force contrary to the body. And that's why we have a fight. Some people have more of a fight. Some people have less of a fight. Now, the fight results in two ideas. Number one, I desire to be connected to the cosmic force of light and all the things that are included in that, like prophecy, like being able to overcome and control the environment around me to whatever degree, to be connected, to get, connect the dots, to understand why things happen. So those are some of the benefits, if you will, uh, of being connected with our soul. But there's a different desire at work. There's a desire of our body, which desires only comfort, which desires for itself, which has an ego, which needs to be recognized, needs to be respected, and, and needs to stay safe. And all those desires, egotistical desires, that are a result of the physical environment and are also our physical belief system and the innate nature of the body. There's a fight. However, some people don't seem to have a fight. Odd. They just do whatever they want, whenever they want. No fight, no difficulty about it. Why, do you think? Because if a person doesn't have a desire to be connected, there's no counterforce. His soul is inactive for, for all respects, meaning 
he is not looking to make a connection and therefore he simply is a robot of his desires and that's how he lives his life. And whatever that may result in, that's what it's going to result in. However, there's another type of person and that person has desire. Now, when a person has desire to be connected, it's like you're, you're here, your soul energy is here, having a desire to be connected, and your body is here. And doing things, maybe I'm addicted and I have fears and I have my control issues and I have my judgment issues and I have uh, whatever I came into this world with and I also need to understand why I'm here and what I came to deal with, what issues I came to fix. There's a discrepancy. And within that discrepancy... There's the, there's the battle, there's the war, and that's the thing that we need to fight. First, we need to understand it, and we have a need, a desire to overcome it. Now, of course, we said earlier, as the code says this week, it's a secret. Once we make the decision to go into the war and do whatever it takes, the battle is all but won. We already have the victory in our hand it's just a matter of revealing it through whatever physical action we need to do. But there's other things that we need to understand because what creates the greatest amount of space between us and our soul? What creates the, 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 the battle, the seed level of a battle at the root? And I think you're going to be very, very surprised at the answer. The answer is our words, our words, that's correct, our words, because it is the nature of the soul to do one thing, to connect with the universe's force of unity, love, peace, harmony, understanding, the light, the sharing concept, which is contrary to ego, neediness, fears, controls, contrary to all of that stuff. Now, one of the precepts of our soul, or the rules that it operates by, is 100% truth. There's no lying possible. There's no concealment possible in the soul. So when we say something, when we say we're going to do something, automatically we receive cosmically the energy or the force to be able to do it. If we don't accomplish that, Okay, if we don't do it, we create a space. Now, to the degree that we said we're going to do things and we did not accomplish them. Now, saying things, it may not, it's not a formal promise, it's not a formal vow. No, no. It can be a number of ways that we really need to be careful about. Number one, it can be saying something as simple as, you know, I'm on a diet. Or, I just gave up gluten. And you say that, and you actually stay away from gluten for three days. Do you know that anything that you do more than three times, that's considered becoming regular at it after we do it three times. That's considered that I made a vow, even I didn't say anything. Anything I do three times in a row is considered a vow. Now. If we decide the fourth day we're going to stop, we create a little bit of a space. So think about it. I'm giving up smoking, I'm giving up sugar, I'm giving up gluten. Didn't last. I'm going to study for three days in a row. And you don't have to say that, you just need to do it. Because three days in a row I felt like studying, I felt like reading, scanning Zohar. You did it three days in a row. You didn't do a fourth day, you broke your word, you broke a vow a cosmic agreement that you made unconsciously. Now, if we already think how many times have we have done that, it's a space that we create between our soul and our body. Now, what that means is a lot of things, but it means also that our word will be taken also less seriously by others. Imagine you go to, you're, you're feeling a little overweight and you want to go to the gym because you want to lose some weight. And here comes the, uh, you know, uh, instructor, and they're 300 pounds and 5 foot 4. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with 500, uh, 300 pounds and 5 foot 4. But if you happen to be a gym instructor and you're instructing people how to lose weight, what do you think? Are you going to listen to that person? How seriously are you going to take the words of that person? Wow, that's all well and good in the physical world. But we don't understand that it's a hundred times more in the spiritual world that people feel our soul. And if we don't do, if we're not in the habit of doing what we say we're going to do more often than not in our own life, even without connection to anybody else, people won't listen to our words. They won't take us as seriously. In fact, you know, the righteous people would be able to say something and it would happen because their word was so strong, because they stood so strongly by everything they said, they would do, they would accomplish. Or not, there's a way that that vow or that agreement, that binding that we create when we do or say something needs to be broken. And before Rosh Hashanah, we have an opportunity to do that. We actually have several. We have before Rosh Hashanah, we have a canceling of the vow. And we have also before the Yom Kippur event, we have something called Kol Nidre, all the vows. That includes cosmic vows. That's another discussion. Point being, it's releasing us, and that's what it's designed to do. But of course, no good to be released if we don't understand that we keep creating negativity in a root source by what we say, or what we say we're going to do, or what we say we're not going to do, and we don't end up doing better, far better, to be extremely careful with what we say. And also, if we find ourselves doing something that might be repeating, but we don't know if we're going to be able to maintain it and repeat it, then we should say to ourselves, without a vow, Beli neder, without a vow. I do this thing without a vow. That's it. Now I'm not calling the energy to support me in doing this thing for the next 20 years, because it may only be for the next four days. But again, there are rules about that. So these are different types of war that we will find ourselves in. We have a chance to clean it up. Michael Berg gave an amazing study. We'll post that uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, and it's all about recognition of our negativity and what we need to do to be able to truly recognize it because that's one of the requirements of being able to fulfill our work in this world is truly recognizing our what we came actually here to fix. Not what we know we're not good at, but what our soul truly came back to fix as a result of the sin of Adam. So try to tune into that. I wish us all luck this week in our battle and the entire month to really fight the war within ourselves for all it's worth. Because that beautiful woman, that's our soul, that's captive. And she wants to be free to connect to the light with her father and mother that she, she's mourning over. And our soul is in pain. When we act selfishly, when we're only with our ego, when we're thinking about ourselves, when we need to protect ourselves, justify ourselves, our soul is in pain. And what we want to do is be more in line with our soul. That's the beautiful woman, whether you're a, a male or a female. We all have that beautiful woman within us. And what we really want is to be it more and more expressed in our life. Because this way, we'll be drawn to more of the things that we need in our life. We'll also say we'll be able to channel more things in our life, help more people, draw more energy into our own life for, for what we need and to protect ourselves and our families. And most of all, this month we know is a preparation. We have about two and a half maybe three weeks left, two and a half weeks left, until the cosmic event of Rosh Hashanah. That's the cosmic boomerang effect, when cause and effect meet, and we have an opportunity to change things before it comes back, before what goes around comes around. Thanks for tuning in.